On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we celebrate Chuckmas with a listen of another death album Mm -hmm. this year. It's symbolic. Yes, from 1995. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters. We like metal. We like to talk about it. And once a year uh-huh. for a month, we do nothing but death metal and right. death metal December. Mm-hmm. And uh, the third, usually the third episode of death metal December ends up being what we like to call Chuck Miss, where we take some time to uh, listen to that uh, that most uh, uh, uh treasured of death metal bands sure. perhaps mm-hmm. uh, to to call to uh, I don't think it would be in pioneers yeah the death metal pioneers of right. of death <laughs> uh right and specifically the the works of the lead songwriter and vocalist Chuck Schuldiner uh and that's why it is mm-hmm. Chuck Miss and this year we will be talking about 1995's Symbolic uh, which was their second to last album mm-hmm. as Death. Uh, Chuck would go on to do a couple other things before he passed away. Control denied. Uh, some some other mm-hmm. some other works. And I realized also mm-hmm. uh, while I was looking stuff up about the early history of the band, there was a story. I think I said a couple of episodes ago that I completely confused about the early history of Death. I completely switched it around with Opeth. Ah, did you? Uh, where I believe I said that like Chuck joined the band as like a bassist and then everyone else left the band and then Chuck was like, well, it's my band. No, that was Michael Ackerfeld was Michael with Opeth. Ackerf- right. This was his baby. This was yeah. Chuck's baby. He was called Mantis before, yes. before it was called Death. Uh, with an A, Mantis. Right. Uh, and yeah, that was that was Chuck's. It was Chuck's band from the beginning, more or less. Although mm-hmm. there was there was a, you know, they like. Death always kind of had a revolving lineup, but it was not really established that this would continue to be a thing. Right. Like it didn't officially become like, oh, this is literally just Chuck's band and he's going to hire people on. Sure. That didn't become a thing <clears throat> until uh, um, I want to say uh, what's the, ah fuck. Spiritual Healing, I oh, think, sure. is the album where that was kind of established. Sure, in 1990. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was James Murphy who was the lead guitar player. He was only the uh, lead guitar player, I think, for one album, though. Yeah. And uh, was Gene the drummer? Um, No. The, no. Gene's first album was he- Individual Thought Patterns. It was Individual Thought Patterns or Human. Okay. I was, ju- I was just fucking looking at it, and I've already forgotten. <laughs> um, but yeah, Gene, uh, mm. I-, I think, did... Th- three albums with them right he was on this one yes uh this was this was i think was this gene's last album fucking hell i was got yeah and like looking at the the wikipedia band member timeline is such a fucking it's it's a mess it's a mess to look at here um (laughs) it's all over the place where the hell is gene hoagland at on this because they're i mean the like the only constant is chuck schuldiner and that's uh that is it um, where it at? Where's Gene? You might have to scroll down there. No, it's uh, all of them are there. I just need to. I uh, <laughs> there's so is, much to read through. Yeah, that, this is a uh, this is bad audio. So we're just gonna move on from that and <laughs> say Gene was on a number of albums, right? <laughs> like, and you know, and, and that's just what the band became. It was just like, all right, Chuck's gonna write all the mm-hmm. stuff, and then he's gonna bring on some people. He's gonna bring on a lead guitarist that's gonna, you know, that's gonna do the stuff. He's gonna bring on a drummer that can that can play, yeah, the drums and. Uh, <laughs> Who's the bass player? You probably don't know that. On this, um, uh, on this uh, it wasn't Steve DiGiorgio. It wasn't Steve DiGiorgio? I don't think so. Let me. Yeah, you know, I come to think of it, when I re-listened to it, I didn't hear the, uh, <laughs> you know, the Steve DiGiorgio fretless work. Uh, he did a couple of bass tracks. Did he? Uh, 10 and 13. Oh, that was just on remastered. Ah. On the remastered version. Never mind. Uh, this was Gene Hoagland on drums, uh, Kelly Conlon on bass. Gotcha. And Bobby Colby on uh, lead. 
yeah, on lead guitar. Right. It's she's just credited as guitar, but right. uh, Chuck was was mostly played rhythm. He yeah. might have. He does a lot of leads too. Yeah, he may have written some of the leads, or he may have. You can always tell when it's Chuck playing the lead too. Yeah, it's got it's got a certain amount of flange on it that just that's that's it, flange and 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 harmony. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and this is, uh, I mean, we, normally we just like bullshit, but we spent quite a lot. Uh, we we spent quite a lot of time bullshitting with each other. Yeah. Uh, before we started recording. Right. Um, but uh, normally we save the discussion of the album until a little bit later of the in the episode. But this is like, I, I guess I would need to go. Was which one was before this? Uh, individual thought patterns. Individual thought was patterns before this. Yeah. Because I mean, the like over the course of the car- of the career of the band. Uh, slowly kind of transitioning from just like, I mean, death metal, the, the, the basic right. death metal, uh, sound, uh, as sort of the, this is the finished product. Mm-hmm. Like if you've got seven churches as, as your blueprint and your prototype, mm-hmm. uh, scream bloody gore is the, this is the first version. This is death metal mark one. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the released product here. Right. Uh, it's no longer in beta testing. Right. And, um, they're releasing on time. Transitioning from that slowly towards, I mean, you can kind of call it like melodic death metal, progressive death metal, technical, maybe somewhat technical, like, like all all three of those kind (laughs) of apply. Um, Mm -hmm. like there were certain tracks on here that I'm thinking, I'm listening to thinking like, oh, that, so that's kind of where some uh, like, melodic death metal hallmarks come from right. and there i'm sure by 95 there had been some other you know kind of melodic death metal bands that had maybe formed or been around but it, i i tend to see melodic death metal as being more of like a late 90s kind of thing and you, you know the, the one thing is that uh listening to this again uh, i hear the roots of deathcore in here yeah De- definitely in there, it's especially in how emotional and personal a lot of the lyrics well, and, and it, a lot and of the music is. Surprising, like metalcore as well, because like yeah, like metalcore kind of comes first, or at least like the the, the early two thousands mm-hmm. sort of metalcore style, where you know your kill switch engages, and sure. you're all that remains and and whatnot. Um, those bands in particular. I think we're probably a lot more influenced by stuff like death. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the generation afterwards, which is, you know, bring me the horizon, asking right. Alexandria and stuff like that, where it's much more influenced by the emo scene. Sure. Um, but like those uh, metalcore bands and then that sort of style gets amped up and then turned into deathcore. And yeah, I can hear that as well. Like um, I think, uh, well, it's all like empty words. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, um, I'm trying to think of the one that I noticed the most. I, it might have zero been, tolerance. I think misanthrope is yeah. one oh, that reminded yeah. misanthrope really the reminded me of track. like yeah. a really reminded me of like a kill switch engage song. Right, there are parts of it that that sounded like an early kill switch engage song, or even like something a much more polished version of something off of like the first two Avenged Sevenfold albums. Sure. Which were, you know, metalcore style, especially the second one, Waking the Fallen. Avenged Sevenfold's first album is, I haven't gone back and listened to it in a while. Mm -hmm. I remember it being kind of, I liked it, but I even remember thinking it was kind of rough at the time. The second album is a lot more polished, but still on that kind of, metalcore style and i've mentioned this before but there's like a riff on sound of perseverance mm-hmm. that event seven will call event sevenfold kind of shamelessly rips off <laughs> even if it was just subconsciously <laughs> right and like a dozen other bands have done the exact same thing mm-hmm. like it's it's practically one for one it sounds like this it's i mean there's only so many ways you can make an omelet Right. Uh, but uh, still, it, it's it's like that. Once you hear the riff, that riff on Sound of Pursuit, I can't mm-hmm. remember what song it is. Once you hear that riff and then hear all the other ones, it's like, oh, yeah, no, this is all the same thing. Right. This is all the same thing. There are um, only so many notes. There are only so I think it's the there's a the famous opening riff from Unholy Confessions, I think, is the Avenged Sevenfold song. Uh, uh, but mm-hmm. people were like, is this the origin of it? It's like, no, it's this death song from Sound of Perseverance. <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, there's, there, there's a lot, I mean, they're, they were pioneers. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that people heard and went, Oh, I'm going to do something like that. Right. There's, there's a a ton of things that, um, that people were, were going to bits and pieces that people were going to pick up. Um, 
There was like little bits. I mean, Opeth was already doing their thing at this time, but there were little bits <clears throat> that like there's a little bit of acoustic guitar on here. Yeah, like in the the second to last, or third to last track, and the, uh, like in the uh, a couple of the last like five yeah, have them have right. them in there. Um, the the last track definitely has. Yeah, it ends that with there. that. It just ends with some acoustic guitar, which right. I I've listened to this before because there's there was some point where I just went through and listened to the entire discography over the course of a couple of days. Sure. Um, but it's been it's been a while since I've like listened to this album in specific, and I mm-hmm. kind of forgotten that it had that uh, the those bits and pieces of acoustic guitar mm-hmm. uh, in there that. Um, kind of took me a little bit by surprise i wasn't expecting that because i know like and again it's been a little i i haven't listened to death hardly at all over the last year probably really? like <clears throat> a couple of years there where i would like every couple of months oh yeah i'll listen to a little bit of death but over the last year i don't know if i've really listened to to death just incidentally uh mm-hmm. i i don't think i've i've done that at all over the last year since the last chuck miss which is kind of a shame yeah because it's a lot of really good music it is um but the, i mean there's been also a lot of other really good music that has come out mm-hmm. uh over the last year or that because we of have disease had, uh yes or that we've had occasion to listen to that came out previous right uh, uh to that so um yeah, the, I don't know. Yeah, There's this, just other things that have taken my interest. This came out when I was 21. 21 years old. It was, and in, it was in theaters when I was 21. Getting drunk for the first time. Yeah, I'd never. What's this? Would it be air? Alcohol? <laughs> well, I suppose I'm of age now. I'll try some of this Huayske. <laughs> <laughs> Is this wine? Because <laughs> you were really yeah. drinking a lot of wine when you were 21. Right, exactly. I was... So many twenty, so many uh, I was twenty-one, 21 year, year old metalhead with an ascot and a bottle of yeah. Merlot. <laughs> so many twenty-one year old metalheads really love their wine. <laughs> if you are a twenty-one year old metalhead that enjoys wine, uh, Yo, there's, there's, that's, that's that's fine. fine. There's nothing exactly. Wrong there's with you. nothing wrong with that at all. I've never been a wine person. You know, wine tends to give me a stomachache and a headache. I. Uh, in the past, I have gotten headaches from wine. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a little bit at Thanksgiving that didn't seem to treat me too badly, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, a lot of a lot of times it just doesn't sit quite so well with me. Uh, it's also just not my <clears throat> drink sure. of choice, exactly. generally speaking. I think I have the I have the same problem with wine as I do with mead, where it's too easy to drink. Yeah, uh, it, it it is. It, it's too easy to just be drinking it and suddenly go like oh i've drank half this entire bottle that's uh Mm -hmm. that's not good because it's also not particularly strong so uh, when but it is it is when you've drank that much Mm -hmm. but the amount of drunkness that you can get off of half of or an entire bottle of wine Mm -hmm. compared to a similarly sized bottle of whiskey is is rather different well yeah there was when i was I think it was the first uh, New Year's that I was in this apartment. Uh-huh. Uh, I drank two whole bottles of mead uh, by myself on New Year's Eve. The wild man? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I drank two whole bottles of, of wild man mead uh, while I was just playing video games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I threw up uh, in, I, ha- I had a little garbage uh, in here and I just th- I threw up in that didn't sure. have time to get to I was I, I was properly shit face drunk mm-hmm. and that's I think probably the second time I, I probably blacked out at some point mm-hmm. during that night that's probably like the second time I've ever been blackout drunk the other time is the time I got kicked out of a bar yeah uh just because I was yeah I got kicked out of sports on tap which is fine because that place is terrible anyway right because I had been overserved right uh and was so drunk I accidentally walked into the women's restroom mm-hmm. There was no one in there, thankfully. Right. But uh, the security guard was just like, yeah, you need to go home, pal. I wasn't like forcefully thrown <laughs> yeah. out of the bar. The security guard was just like, he's clearly had too much time for you to go. Where's right. your ride? They were they were pretty nice about it. Did he let you finish at the urinal first? <laughs> well, there wasn't. One. <laughs> I'm peeing in the urinal, I, I sir. I think also I didn't like <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly, which I barely do anyway. Sure. 
but I believe I basically just opened the door. I, mm-hmm. I like I opened the door and maybe took a step in before I went, wait a minute. And that but that was enough to, yeah. for the security to clearly go like he's yeah. been overserved. It's time for him to go. home. Yeah, there was a red flag thrown in the field. And, uh, and it wasn't really for the game. It wasn't really the bartender's fault either, because most of the drinks were not drinks. She got me. <laughs> they were not drinks that that I asked her for mm-hmm. and paid her for. It was drinks that my roommate kept on not wanting to finish. Uh, and kept on putting in front of me and I was like, sure, I'll never refuse free alcohol. Uh, and that was a mistake. Yeah, sure. Uh, it was also $15 all you can drink night. So that's not responsible. No, that's, it isn't. That's, that's bad. It's deeply irresponsible. Right. It was just a lot of vodka and Sprite. It's a lot of bottom shelf vodka right. hiding the fact that it tastes like gasoline with some Sprite. Right. Um, Nickel shot night. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what is that's a John Mulaney yeah thing, that's a John Mulaney thing nickel yeah. nickel shot night right um but uh yeah it was just there was a cavalcade of bad decisions that night mm-hmm. but the night that I got drunk on two bottles of mead um I I had done laundry earlier in the day yeah and the laundry was my bed sheets and I had not put them back on before I got shit face drunk uh-huh. and so you're not doing it afterwards yeah. There's no way in hell that's going to happen. So <laughs> I just took my comforter. Uh-huh. I, a grown man, and I mean, I was t- I was 22, so sure. I don't know if that really, to quote Kyle Kinane, I was just, I was not even a human being. I was just a, a creature. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, you know, here I am, an, an illegal adult right. <laughs> of drinking age in my own apartment um sleeping on my own couch because the perfectly suitable bed that I had was mm-hmm. completely bare. We've all been there, man. Yeah. I've just... I've actually in the past uh woken up next to my bed. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, at the very least that's probably because you were so inebriated you wanted to get on your bed, you just couldn't. Right. Uh for me it was I I if I hadn't been so drunk, I probably would have thought, I mean, if I hadn't been so drunk, I would just put a put, would have put my fucking bed sheets on. Right. Um, but I also would have occurred to me like, you know, I could still just sleep on this. Mm-hmm. I just, I could just put the comforter down or something yeah. and wrap myself in it and still sleep on the bed. Um, I mean, who hasn't woken up on a bare mattress anyway? Me. You've never woke up on a bare mattress? No. See, the thing is, I'm, I'm a little bit of a violent sleeper. Really? Yeah. So you rip the bed sheets off. I've, I've done it. I've, I've ripped the bed sheets off. Even a fitted sheet. Yeah. That's an accomplishment. I, I woke up the next day like, hmm, wow, that's naked uh, mattress right there. How did I do that? Also, I'm naked mattress. How? <laughs> I've been a mattress this whole time. Wow. That's crazy. Man. How am I having these thoughts? Man, does whiskey do that to you? Whiskey with a little bit of LSD? Turns you into you- a mattress. <laughs> you know, it's just a normal Tuesday night. Right, exactly. Whiskey and a little bit of LSD. Uh-huh. Fucking. Uh, that's, a, that's terrible, by the way, uh, because. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, L- LSD is one of those things that sort of cancels out all the other shit. So if you're yeah. if you're high on acid, if you're high on acid, we I mean we it was my friend's graduation night from high school uh-huh. and we were driving around in a car. We drank between the three of us like four cases of beer. Jesus we, Christ. We we smoked like a like a half an ounce of weed and we we're on but we were on acid, like five tabs of acid. Jesus. So uh at one point the acid starts to wear off and I'm and I'm driving the car on Broadway. Uh, and yeah, this is bad. The kids do not do what I'm describing here. This is ter- <laughs> a terrible idea. The acid started to wear off and suddenly, oh, I drank an entire I'm case of I'm incredibly drunk. I'm re- I'm fucked up. And and then I hear my, my buddy Chuck, thinking of Chuck, uh <laughs> from the from the passenger seat going, "OJ, pull over. OJ, pull over. OJ, you're going 5 miles an hour." <laughs> Pull <laughs> over. And then I like I crawled into the back seat. I passed out. I woke up and we were somewhere near Velva. <laughs> oh, why? And though, I, I know because they were driving now. I'm I'm out. And we got there and they. Nope. Did anybody live in Velva? Nope. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but that was about 20 miles away. It is. For context. And there were there were wild turkeys and they had pulled over <laughs> to watch the wild turkeys. And so they opened the door and, and they're like, hey, OJ. 
wild turkeys. Check out the turkeys, man. And then I barfed all over the highway. Because you immediately thought of whiskey. No, no, no. I, I didn't. I immediately was just over. Well, you were doing you were doing an impression of the turkeys. Well, yeah, but that was the whole thing. It was and they made fun of me for years after that. They, <laughs> they, they would they would walk past me and go, call and response. Yeah, <laughs> the turkeys. At least this was May. Yeah, in, in North Dakota instead of right right now in North Dakota. That would be stupid. Which beyond is stupid, apocalyptic. Yeah. It is so fucking cold. It is so fucking cold that I drove here and I'm not turning off my car yes. until I get back home because otherwise it'll just freeze up. Yeah, it, it is. It is so goddamn cold right. outside. Uh, I, ugh, I'm fucking it, like this. This is the shit that you expect. Like I expect this shit in January. Okay. This if this is shit is not supposed to happen in December. Right. Until but and now mind you, it is warming up. It's it was actually it's gonna go up to negative five by the end of the week. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm, pretty good. Actually. I'm actually gonna wear my tank top and thong to work. <laughs> yeah. No. You thought you hated seeing my belly button before. No. There's more. He came in. <laughs> From because is you went to Target to get uh because my some gifts I went to Target to get some gifts and then I, I came I my went to get in my car and it wouldn't start so I walked back from the mall to the radio station yes and then I'm putting my hand into my armpits and it's hiking up my shirt and you <laughs> this no this is when you came back from after you getting your car oh, started oh right oh right yeah 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 you were hiking up your company. shirt putting your hands in your armpits exposing your belly button to Jeff and I and eventually <laughs> I was like go sit down. <laughs> Sit on your hands. I'm tired of looking at your belly. <laughs> you were grossed out by it. Yeah. Which, it's understandable. I don't want to see another man's belly button. <laughs> I don't need to see that. It's like, t- <laughs> now I'm just thinking of uh, uh, the weird, just like belly buttons, mm-hmm. the weird conspiracy theory about why, uh, about Taylor Swift never showing her belly button. Cause she doesn't have one. She doesn't have one or something like that. Right. I don't know if I've ever like, read into that other than I know they exist Mm -hmm. and it's it is kind of odd that she like never chose like there's plenty of outfits with like midriff right I I, never an exposed belly button I feel like her lack of belly button is sort of like zebras and she just doesn't want to show it is like yeah I mean yeah (laughs) it's it's either she just doesn't feel like showing you her her midriff because she's self-conscious about it or she's an alien I mean she's an alien (laughs) I feel like the first is probably more likely. But what if she is an alien? Well, that's pretty cool. She's a pretty hot alien. Her new album is actually pretty and very pretty talented. good. She's beautiful and talented. I actually enjoyed so, the So, you know, I, I for one welcome our beautiful and talented alien overlords. <laughs> <laughs> if all the aliens look like Taylor Swift, we're fucked. Hopefully. <laughs> But um, tiss. <laughs> All right, I'm done being yeah. shallow. Oh, and, and I got uh, a, a new video game this this What'd week. What'd you get? Uh, my youngest child suggested to me. He says this is game. It's free if you're in PlayStation Plus. It's otherwise forty bucks. Okay. It's called Bio Mutant. Oh yeah, I've seen people play that. Yeah, it's actually a, it's a fun game. You're like I'm a weird it. little guy. Yeah, you're a weird. This is post humanity. Like a weird little animal creature. Right, and uh, and you got some. Cool moves and and a gun and a big sword. It's kind of like a Dark Soulsy sort of thing, isn't it? It is. It's a bit. Yeah, people have compared it a little bit to the the, the Elden Ring experience. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's a little. There's. It's more hand. Way more handholdy. So. Yeah. Most games are more handholdy than the the Souls games. Yeah. Yeah. Mo- the vast majority of at least Western games, anyway. Right. The vast majority of them are. Yeah, playing Souls games is like the way my uncle taught me how to swim. <laughs> Just. Throwing you into the water. Good luck. It's fucking uh Learn or uh, die. <laughs> uh uh ah, John Wayne style. Uh-huh. I've I've seen like oh, a clip. Yeah, that of, clip? What fucking movie is that from? I don't even remember. Is that from Shane? No. I don't know. But because first it's the kid, and then yeah. his mom is like, I don't know how to swim either. And, and then he's, he's looking at her and she turns around <laughs> nervously and runs, runs away. Yeah. Uh I haven't seen, I've hard, I don't know if I've, I think I've, I think the only John Wayne movie I've ever watched all the way through might mm-hmm. be the original True Grit, 
which Good I movie. think I watched entirely just as a comparison to the Coen Brothers version. I haven't seen the Coen Brothers version. I really like the Coen Brothers version. Uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, I would say probably closer in spirit to the book okay. in the sense that the, the John Wayne version is a lot more heroic. Right. Uh, you know, Rooster Cogburn is a lot more of a, 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 a traditional Western hero mm-hmm. where I, and I read the book as well. It's been a while, but I I remember from the book him being the type of asshole he is. And <laughs> he is as Jeff Bridges plays right. in the movie. Um, he's just a, a fat. Uh, he's a one eyed fat man <laughs> as the he gets called. Uh, Fill your hands, you son of a bitch. Yes. Uh, (laughs) And he's just kind of a, you know, he's a drunken slob. And that's, (laughs) I feel like that kind of uh, mess of a human being Mm -hmm. is just not really in John Wayne's wheelhouse. Right. Right. In the Jeff Bridges version, you know, at the beginning, he's, you know, getting some milk and making a white Russian and. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and basically not paying for the stuff he gets at the grocery store. Now what if it was now what if it was true grit, but it was the dude. <laughs> was I'm just, Mr. Cockburn, man. Hey man, why don't you I'm I've come out here to kill you because this little girl uh asked me to. So Fuck it, dude. Let's go bowling. <laughs> uh but yeah. Um, you're just like, do you want to look out the window to see I if really someone is stealing see, your car? I really want to heard something going on out there. Well, look out the window. Just uh, move just, the- So also for the record, uh, so everybody knows if something weird happens, I'm having some awful neck pain that's shooting all the way from my back all the way up to the top of my scalp. Yeah. And, and I'm having a hard time swallowing. So if... Uh, if you die in the middle of this. If I, if, I, if I die in the middle of this, it's not... I absolve Kale of any wrongdoing right now. That's right. I didn't murder OJ. He didn't murder me. I died of some sort of throat ailment and the bullet wound was incidental. Yeah, that's... As were the stab wounds. Yeah, twenty, all 27 of them. Yes. Go ahead and uh, look out the window to make sure someone oh, hasn't shit. stolen your car. Well, this is kind of awkward. Look out the window. Oh! Oh, it's, oh okay, good. <laughs> that was a I, bad noise. I was, looking, I was looking at the parking lot across oh. and it's like... Where the fuck's my car? <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm not looking at this part. That's where's my car right there. Okay, good. Tail lights are on and everything. Good. All right. Okay, so before someone steals your car, well, let's let's continue. Let's uh, talk about death the some episode more. And talk it. <laughs> you know, we had to take yeah. a break to, to do our, because we started talking about the album a lot earlier than we normally do. Right. Uh, so. You ah, dropped a stylus. I dropped a stylus for my little board that I use. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, yeah, if you don't know anything about Death, Death's uh, an American death metal band. Right. Uh, depending upon who you ask, it's the death metal band. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as we discussed earlier this month when we were talking about Seven Churches, uh, I think it is still appropriate to call Death the first death metal band. Right. Um, Whereas but uh, you Possessed would, is thrash metal, essentially. Yes, but Seven Churches is the first death metal album. Right. Um, but in, in any case, uh, they were formed in the, I guess the technically the early eighties, really early eighties. Yeah. Uh, and sort of produced a number of demos, mm-hmm. uh, for a number of years before in 86, I believe is when you get scream bloody gore. It was 87, um, oh, yeah, leprosy was 87. I want to say. Yeah. So I believe, I believe it was yeah. 86 that you have scream bloody gore and, uh, sort of, laid down the the blueprint of people going like oh now this is a genre Genre. death metal is now a genre yeah uh it's not just like that one album that possessed made right uh this is this is a thing now Uh um and continued to sort of be the the pioneers to the degree that chuck shuldener is considered the the godfather of death metal yeah. As as he is sometimes called. And a lot of people forget that Grindcore preceded death metal. That's true. Yeah. Although Grindcore before death metal was a little different. Yeah, it was it was more like it was more punk. Yeah, more punk. A lot more punk. Influenced. Like like the, the first napalm death stuff. Yeah, that's that's way more punk than yeah. uh because than, I mean uh care what the fuck is the who's the who's the guitarist in Napalm Death? Oh guitarist in uh, Napalm Death is um uh, Where does he play bass? What are you talking about? Shane Embry? Shane Embry. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I, I think a number of the the long-standing members uh of Napalm Death right. all kind of came out of the punk scene. Yeah. 
rather than the metal scene. <laughs> Although I do have a picture on my desktop of my computer of Shane Embry hanging out with King Diamond. Cause why not? Cause why not? <laughs> Cause why not? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, like, and then it would be, you know, sort of the, when, when the hell did Barney Greenway join Napalm Death? Uh, Is that the early fairly 90s? early on. Well, no, I think it was late 80s. Late 80s, I want to say okay. it was late 80s. Because, yeah, I think by the time <clears throat> Napalm Death sort of transitions to being much more of a death metal band, yeah, uh, death metal kind of was already a thing. Because if, if you listen to Scum, right. there's not really much of any death metal to no. speak of well, on that. Not really metal. It's more like... It's hardly any music. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? What was that? Uh, yeah. Um, uh-huh. But, uh, uh, yeah, sort of like pre, pre-Barney... Uh, now it just sounds like I'm talking about the dinosaur <laughs> pre Barney napalm death right. is, is a lot less metal and a lot more punk. And that was just kind of grindcore in general. Sure. Um, but and then, then after he joined the band, then that's when they loved you and you loved them. Yep. And we all, we became a ha- big, ha- big family. happy family. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I lost the thread there. Sure. Um, so why don't we just uh, talk, uh, get back to death. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get back to death and talk about uh, Symbolic. You said this album came out uh, when you were 21 and mm-hmm. then we got on a story. Sure, about, about drinking. About drinking and doing acid. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was, uh, did you listen to this at the time that oh, it came yeah. out? This on CD. Yeah, all right. Well, of course, yeah. I played this in my, uh, my, 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 uh, Dodge Colt is what I was driving Dodge at the time. Dodge Colt. Yeah. 1992 Dodge Colt. My grandparents got it for me when I graduated high school. I don't know why that. It was brand new. It said just like, why does that? There's the name Dodge Colt mm-hmm. confuses me for some reason. There was also a Mitsubishi Colt, which is exactly identically the same car. But if you look real on the on the, on the tail of the Dodge Colt, it says, Made for Dodge by Mitsubishi. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a thing back then too, because the mm-hmm. like the early um, uh, Toyota Corolla mm-hmm. and the Chevy, I believe it was Chevy Prism. There was there was an American Geo Prism, the Geo Pr- the I Geo think, Prism, and then I I think what I think was made by Chevy. Maybe yeah, I think yeah. Geo was a Chevy brand or something. Right. I, all I know, my dad had. Mm-hmm that car as his work car for a while tiny car and i think the uh i think the badge was technically a chevy badge if i remember correctly but uh in any case it's the exact same car as the toyota corolla of the day um which i have one of those mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. but um oof. yeah what we uh we got on that there we go we really got back to the band didn't we <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah, you listened to this a lot. What were your thoughts at the time? Uh, this at the time, I think it quickly became one of my favorite death albums. Yeah, this and al- a lot of people agree. Yeah, this in in my mm-hmm. understanding is mm-hmm. widely considered to be their best work. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily familiar enough with their entire discography. I don't know if I've listened to their whole discography through enough times to truly say whether it is my favorite or not. Well, there's only two more you haven't listened to, as far as I know. Well, I've li- I've listened to all of them. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, listened yeah. to all of them before. You said that. Uh, yeah. There's just only two more that we haven't done right. for Chuck Miss. Yes. Um, but uh, I, I remember really liking Sound of Perseverance the first time I listened to it. Yeah. Just because it's there's a lot of really creative stuff going on there mm-hmm. uh, that I that I really enjoy, and it's the culmination of the this band's entire existence. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know the further development of the sound. But yeah, this is really good too, and there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, stuff on it that I really, really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's what would you say? Uh, I guess before we move on to our favorite songs on here, uh, part of like being connected to like people considering this to be Death's best album. Mm-hmm. Uh, the out of the reviews, just on the Wikipedia page for this album, it comes out to a ninety point one out of nine reviews for mm-hmm. the score, uh, which is pretty darn good. Uh, not a lot of albums end up in ninety plus category right. there. And the, the, you know, that last 10%, uh, most albums don't, uh, end up there. Uh, usually even for critically acclaimed albums, it's usually somewhere in the eighties when you add together enough reviews and average them out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is at a 90.1. Uh, what's, what's your favorite track? 
God, that's so hard. Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's very very hard. I mean, pick one. Like <laughs> like the, the the title track, which is the first track, is oh god, fucking fantastic. That that um, I think it's technically the, I think in songwriting songwriting terms, you would call it the bridge, mm-hmm. uh, riff yeah. there, uh, leading from just the verse into the chorus that. Mm-hmm. Just breakneck uh, pace, and that is that is another one of those riffs that really reminded me of like like early two thousands metalcore. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that's one of those riffs where I was just like, oh, this does sound kind of like something you would hear on like a like you know a, a early two thousands kind of metalcore uh, album, right? Um, but uh, yeah, that's a, a really, really good riff on there. Uh, any others that that are big contenders? Uh, I mean, other than all of them, other than, yeah, is, that's there, a, is there something else you could pick out? There's something special about all the songs, like Zero Tolerance. I put, it, I put Symbolic as my number one. Yeah, that's fan- as well. it's fantastic. But I mean, the, the opening and title track. Empty really Words good. is is it's fucking awesome. Uh, Crystal Mountain is really good. You're yeah. Like, Misanthrope is good. The perennial Quest, eight minutes long. Yes. That's just, I I have perennial quest uh, as my second favorite, uh-huh. um, just because I mean, look, I'm a sucker for big long closing tracks. Right. I like I like uh, little bits of melodic stuff. That's probably got the most melody on the album. Sure, uh, I like the acoustic guitar stuff. I like all of the, I like all of it. Except there's a, there's a, a a middle part with the song and the song without judgment. Yes, that that all of a sudden it stops and it's just got these this beautiful ambient sort of note rise and it's just wow yeah. just spine tingling and the, and the funny thing is what I, what I really loved about it is as he stomped the fuck out of it like it, <laughs> it immediately comes out of it going into just some some thrashy deathy yeah f- fucking awesomeness um i put crystal mountain as my as my number 3 uh-huh. um uh great song something that always comes to mind though when i see that is then i think of uh, crystal mountain records in metalocalypse sure uh cuz i just love how throughout Metalocalypse, like all the brand made up brand names are all references to metal <laughs> bands or metal songs. Well, you, you heard that you, you uh, because you, and you can. That's one great thing about Chuck Shoulder is that his lyrics were never buried. Yes. In, in the vocals. Uh, you could always pick out what he's saying. And you listen to Crystal Mountain. It's a very sort of anti-religious sort of piece. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's. Not that's not particularly special for for their discography, right? I mean, that's that's the whole fucking album for spiritual healing. Yeah, that's that's the the basis of the the name of the album. So <laughs> is is anti religiosity. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, Crystal Mountain, and then also a Metalocalypse, Dimu Burger, <laughs> Dimu Burger, <laughs> Dimu Burger, uh, but. Yeah. Uh, what what metal are you bestowing upon upon symbolic like Maz Kanato to Chewbacca on this Chuck Miss episode? I have a hard time. I think I've said this before. Hard time. I think bestowing. we traditionally don't do medals for Chuck Miss. Right. Albums, that that'll so. be like uh, giving the Commissioner's Cup to Abner Doubleday. I mean, yeah. That's. I, mean, I have no idea what that that's means, baseball. but sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, that's, <laughs> I agreed with that. Yeah. Just I get, you could have said. <laughs> that that could have been a reference to something terrible, and I would have said, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no." It's, <clears throat> I, yeah, I feel I feel like it's it's weird to, yeah, you know, to, to rate it, you know, and 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 on today of all days, yeah, on on this on this Chuck miss, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you know, it's it's not necessary, right? Uh, go listen to Death if you like extreme metal. Mm-hmm. Uh, you should listen to it. I'm I'm typically not one of those metal fans. Not one of those. I'm typically not a metal fan. <laughs> what I what I'm getting to is yeah. I, I I'm not typically one of those music fans in general. Where I'm like, if you listen to this, you have to go back right. and listen to the listen to the old stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you you have to listen to it to. in order. It, I I, tr- I traditionally don't think that, but I think especially with death, mm-hmm. I think it is worth it. It will enrich your experience going forward. Uh. Especially because I think like I think the problem for me for much of my experience listening to metal, part mm-hmm. of the reason why I often have not gone back to listen to older, earlier stuff mm-hmm. is entirely because it's like the Seinfeld effect of uh, uh, 
the the saying of like Seinfeld isn't funny mm-hmm. coming from someone who is my age, who has grown up on, you know, modern sitcoms. Sure. Because everything in every modern sitcom is just aping off of Seinfeld. So you feel like you've seen all of it before. Sure. So for a lot of the music that I listen to, I feel like I've heard it before. Whereas in my but day, back in my day. It was revolutionary. It was. It was fresh. But um, <clears throat> I think death metal as a genre, even in its earliest forms with death and with possessed, is still derived enough uh-huh. and complex enough that you are still going to hear things that you haven't heard before. Right. And especially someone who is as talented a songwriter as Chuck Schuldiner mm-hmm. is, is still coming up with, is, you know. Well, not now. Not, yeah, not still, but still came up with co- compositions that continue to sound fresh uh-huh. uh, even after, you know, a, another uh, 25 years of of development. Mm-hmm. Um it still sounds fresh and it still sounds exciting and it's not uh, it, it wasn't so basic that uh, you could pile a whole bunch of more stuff on top of it. Like right. this, this music fills the space in a way that like as good as it may be, you know, you listen to uh, an, an early Black Sabbath album and it's sure. like there's a lot of empty space in here. There's a lot of atmosphere in a Black Sabbath album. There's a lot of atmosphere uh, in a lot of space. For things to build on top of that. There wasn't right. there's not a ton of that in death metal. Mm-hmm. And you know, to that credit, death metal has not changed an awful lot mm-hmm. since this album came out. Right. Uh you know, I, I don't think death metal has really changed or evolved all that much since since the late nineties or early two thousands. Mm-hmm. I, I think the the biggest thing going <clears throat> on is there's sort of a a, a trend towards getting a bit spacier and a bit trippier. Right. Uh, you know, you've got your, your blood incantations and your, uh, 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 uh gate creepers and whatnot. Like, right. like gate, most of gate creepers discography is very meat and potatoes, <laughs> you know, HM to, uh, right. buzz saw sound, uh, <laughs> death metal. But then that uh-huh. recent EP they put out, with that last song mm-hmm. on it, with that was that super long sort of death doom track on there. Uh, I would love to hear more of that. Mm-hmm. But um, wow, it occurs to me when this came out, I was still married for the first time. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Oh wow, wow. I don't know why I'm Michelle I'm Owen. Owen. I'm Owen Wilson. <laughs> this okay. has been the Owens. Hi, I'm o- I'm Owen Wilson, and this is my friend Owen Banks. Uh, all right, <laughs> that's it. That's, that's that's the episode. That's the episode. Um, that's Chuck Miss, everybody. Merry Chuck Miss. Merry Chuck Miss to everyone. Uh, it will still be Death Metal December next week. Right. So what are we gonna um, do? It's your your turn. I think I knew what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. and I have forgotten okay. what it was. So I will tell you. Later, mm-hmm. uh, I think my idea was to, I didn't listen to too much of it. I, you brought up uh, over text. You brought up the the newest Goat Horror album. Yeah, which uh, perhaps I will I will give that a, a full listen through and see if it's pretty fucking good. That I want to see if it's something that I wanted. I, I listened to a little bit of it before I decided uh-huh. on that Revocation album, mm-hmm. just because I I was like I listened to a little bit of the revocation album. I was like, no, 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 I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this one first. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've met Sammy Duet from Goat Whore. from Goat Whore. Yeah. And before, cause he was, uh, in a different band called Acid, Acid Bath, Bath at right. the time. Yeah. Uh, he I mean, played me. through my cabinet. Yes. You've told me about this when I talked about Acid Bath. I'm just very proud of that. It's, it's a cool story. I'll probably bring it up again. Cool story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps next week. <laughs> when we talk about the band he's in now. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably do that new Goat Horror album. All right. Uh, uh, I'm done with that. I, I think that's what we shall. So until then, uh, why don't you uh, follow our social media pages, mm-hmm. Facebook and Twitter, I guess. <laughs> oh, Ugh. I, I guess if you Gross. want to, or if you are free <laughs> of those horrible cesspits, uh, just subscribe to our feed on your Apple podcast app or whatever it is you're using to listen to us right now, right now. Do it. Uh-huh. Uh, so until you hear from us again, 
Uh, thank you very much for listening to the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations.